My name is Justin Pritchard. This is the 2022 Hyundai Kona N. It is an awful lot of fun to drive, but it's not perfect. And in this video, we're going to dive into some of the best and worst things about it. But inevitably, when you're reviewing one of these, there's only one way to get things kicked off. So let's get started. Imagine your favorite coin-operated arcade racing game, and then imagine being able to drive it around for real life, and you've got the basic idea of the Hyundai Kona N. This hot rod variant of Hyundai's popular compact SUV uses flashy arcade racer menus, graphics, and on-screen animations across two screens to help suck drivers into the performance. It creates a visual system that rewards the lead-footed and converts the light-footed. The targeted list of upgrades reads like a boy racer's Christmas wish list. If your teenager got their hands on your credit card and took the regular Kona on an all-expenses-paid trip to the automotive aftermarket, the result would probably be something just like this. A highly compelling user interface with stylized steering wheel controls and fully customizable on-screen menus and monitors link the driver to the hardware beneath. Lively animations and visuals call console racing game menu screens to mind. So let me give you a little more detail on some of my favorite features and touches in here and how we customize the driving experience. So it starts up here with an all-digital instrument cluster, and we can see those white dials there. Uh, those respond to the drive mode that we select which we do from down here uh, with this little drive and traction dial. We can see the context of the button changing here when we press it from drive to traction, and then we tip this left or right uh, to make our selection. That happens up here on the screen, so we can select drive modes uh, from sport, eco, or normal. And notice when we go into sport mode here, you'll actually hear that exhaust get louder, watch. Back up into normal mode and the exhaust quiets down. On the traction side, we now have traction modes for snow, deep snow, mud, or sand if we need them. And that's all referenced up here on the central display screen as well, which makes it easy for you to keep an eye on exactly what your Kona N is doing. Now down here on the steering wheel, uh, we have an N button here, another one on this side, and NGS, that stands for N Grin Shift, that gives you 10 bonus horsepower. It makes the transmission shift faster and harder, and it works on a 20 second countdown timer that looks like this. And so you can see when I press that, probably heard the exhaust get louder there, and we are on a 20 second timer that's counting down for that system to work. Once we've used it, if we're using it, we're not right now because we're parked, we would have to turn this off and let it cool down before using it again disengage any time by just tapping it again there. The two end buttons here are your gateway into some preset drive modes that you can totally configure on your own. So when I press N on this side, you'll see that instrument cluster light up and change there. And we can customize the displayed information. Now we're in a much racier setting. Uh, we can press that again. Custom mode two displayed down there at the bottom. Press it another time. And we've just got the standard N mode here. And that's all in addition to the standard drive modes that you use uh, with this dial. You've got additional sportier drive modes uh, with those N paddles right here. Notice right down at the bottom there, we've got those red indicators for engine, steering, and suspension, telling us the level of performance dialed into each of those systems right now. And if we want to call the shots on those on our own, we go up in here into the central screen, and there's a couple of things we can do in here. The first thing that you see here is additional information, engine, oil temperature, throttle position, gear and RPM position, lap timer if you need it, and even uh, the brake pedal pressure, how hard you're pressing on those brakes. Any of these uh, can be called up or tracked over time. So we just pressed engine temperature, we can see here on this chart, it's actually tracking the engine temperature for us over time. There are a couple of situations, primarily in motorsports, where that might be useful for you. Cool little trick, if not. When we swipe this over to the next screen here, uh, we're into the menu that allows us to totally customize exactly how this vehicle works in each mode. So if I want to change my custom one setting to something sort of semi-sporty, I'd maybe put the engine in sport mode 
the steering, maybe I like that better in Sport Plus. It's a little bit quicker. Uh, suspension, maybe for ride comfort's sake on the roads we have here, I'll put that in Sport Mode. Uh, transmission, same thing too. The ELSD system, that's the front differential, how we want that to respond. How much uh, electronic stability control intervention do we want, if any? The exhaust sound from normal uh, to Sport to Sport Plus and what style of head-up display that we want to engage as well. So with those custom settings defined, we can now go into Custom 2, and I like that one to have everything up on the maximum here. So now we've customized our two different drive modes, and what I like here is that you've got a custom infographic and some on-screen tips in each of these that helps to explain exactly what you're doing by changing those settings before you do it. So I like how this looks like the interface of an arcade racing game. I like how it gives you even incremental control over just about everything to do with the Kona Ends drive. But more than all of that, I like how it's engaging. This is all in your face, it's all right at your fingertips, and it all executes and animates in a way that seems to encourage you to go in and play around and really explore the capabilities of this machine and what it can do. So to recap, uh, we're in end mode here. If we're done with that, just flick this dial uh, one twist counterclockwise. We're back in normal, things are quieter, softer, and this is just your everyday all-purpose driving mode if you want it. Three quick presets here, that's sport, normal, and eco. And then for maximum performance and maximum control, we've got those two custom end modes. In addition to the standard end mode, which we engage with these little buttons, right here on the steering wheel. Up front, four in a row makes her go. The Kona N's 2.0-liter Turbo 4 attacks the front tires. With 276 horsepower and 289 pounds of torque via an 8-speed wet double-clutch transmission, or DCT, that's designed specifically for high-performing applications. The wet designated version of this transmission uses oil to cool and control components within via two dedicated pumps to the benefit of reduced friction, temperatures, and shift speed while improving efficiency. The Kona N's DCT is a neat machine and it feels on the ball. In slow traffic where this type of transmission can often feel clumsy and slow to respond, I came away surprised at how direct and responsive it was even with just a little throttle input from a stop. This makes the transmission much friendlier to use in stop and go traffic. That's no fun though. Opened up, lightning speed gear shifts are the star of the show, complete with a finely dialed in sensation of being pushed up into the next gear as the cogs swap electronically in milliseconds at full throttle. From traffic to track day, you won't throw this transmission off of its game. It knows what it's doing. Pulling power is very strong, but drivers will have to think a step ahead of the engine's turbo lag at times. Things start to get spicy above about 2200 RPM, and the engine breathes happily to the better part of 7000 revs for a rare combination of meaty low-end torque and a high revving power peak that reminds me of the last time I drove a Civic Type R. The torque is flat, rich, and abundant, and you'll see this machine's best work at full throttle, with the revs halfway or better up the clock. Here, you really start to feel your seat pressing into your back. Still, though the engine sounds powerful and assertive enough, the soundtrack itself isn't the most thrilling you'll find for the dollar. At full song, this Turbo 4 sounds like it's raging away delightfully under the hood, but some drivers will wish for a smoother sound. Also, the fastest off-the-line starts can generate axle hop as the turbo gets breathing and tries to liquefy the front tires. This is much less likely on a clean, dry, totally flat pavement surface, though the fast-acting DCT and traction control systems quickly mitigate the stampiness with a quick but early shift up into second gear to regain traction. This isn't an enormous deal. If axle hop exceeds optimal levels, it's quickly and smoothly cancelled by the electronics and transmission, though you will lose a few hundred revs on entry into second gear. Torque steer is nicely managed, but sufficiently present to encourage a firm grip on the wheel. You're good for 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in a little over 5 seconds, often with a few squiggles from the front end that are never overwhelming, but will remind you to hang on tight as boost pressure builds in first. The Kona N's steering is hilarious. Even in its tamest settings, just a few millimeters of movement applied to the thick rim affect a change in direction. That ensures go-kart steering response at virtually all times. Weighting is relatively heavy for a locked-on feel that helps drivers steer precisely and with intent. A lane change requires a nearly invisible adjustment to the steering wheel angle. In sportier settings, drivers will find themselves piloting this pocket rocket around ramps, bends, and roundabouts with their wrists and fingertips, not their arms. 
Here's a machine that enters, rounds, and exits corners with a highly engaging feel, becoming of the friskiest of hot hatches. Downside, the Kona N has a rhinoceros-like turning circle, which is weirdly large for a compact. It's less maneuverable in tight quarters than it looks. The Kona N's brakes brought the biggest grins on my test drive and also a complaint. At the top of the pedal's travel, a slight numbness makes it easy to prevent jerky, hair-trigger operation in traffic. Dig in deeper to see their best work, thanks to deep reserves of stopping power and a feeling of precision that's amplified the harder you dive into the pedal. Panic stops are dizzyingly quick even with hot brakes. Like the engine, these big brakes feel most on point when worked hard, where every press deeper into the pedal is met immediately by harder deceleration, for a confidence-building feel of additional clamping force that's always at the ready. So mostly, these brakes wouldn't feel out of place on a twice-the-price luxury performance model, even if I did note some of the squirmiest panic stops in recent memory, specifically thanks to a rear-end wiggle that appears from time to time. Some drivers might find this alarming, others will find it keeps them alert. All right, so front seats in my comfortable seated driving position. Uh, these are a fairly aggressively bolstered seat. We've got this suede material here. That's going to help us kind of lock into place uh, by grabbing onto our clothes. Relatively easy to get in and out of as a bolstered sport bucket goes. Definitely compact sizing around me up here as I'm sitting up front. Uh, the knees aren't crowded. The headroom is about the width of my hand up above me here. I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but definitely snug for someone of my size, about 5 foot 10 and 200 pounds. Now let's see how I would fit in the back seat directly behind somebody of an identical size. Uh, so immediately a little tighter back here. Knee room, sort of two fingers. Could two adults fit back here? Yes. I uh, definitely wouldn't want to be sitting back here uh, for hours and hours on end, though. The Kona N uses a set of bolstered sports buckets that look more aggressive than they feel. I think they're a great balance. On one hand, the bolstering holds drivers securely in place, making it easier for them to control the vehicle more smoothly while reducing their workload. That's good stuff for lapping day. On the other hand, bolstering is sufficient, not excessive meaning the seats are easier to enter and exit, and less likely to pinch or hug the backsides of thicker or wider drivers. After 2,000 kilometers in these seats, I'd call them effective at doing their job without being unduly uncomfortable, even if I wish for a softer lower seating pad beneath me. Just choose your pants carefully. By design, the suede inserts that grip onto your clothing and lock you in place can also result in some aggressive wedgies on entry to your seat. In my northern Ontario locale, the Kona N rode better than I was expecting. The track tune suspension keeps the body sprung in very close proximity to its wheels, though there is a layer of softness at the outer edges of the damper travel that helps smooth most of the harsh, brittle, and rough feel that's common of the most athletic suspensions in this setting. Road noise levels range from generous to excessive, ditto the sound of the gummy bear sticky tires flinging sand into the rocker panels. Elsewhere, certain specific pavement imperfections can coax abrupt wax or clanks from the shocks, and the Kona's rear end can become stampy on occasion. This is mostly typical sports car stuff and easily excusable by the enthusiast driver in exchange for the reflexes enabled. My main disappointment from the ride in a rough road setting was noise-related, not comfort-related. Ultimately, I found the ride to be often noisy and sometimes abrupt, but the Kona N could definitely get away with a less comfortable ride given its capabilities. We're underneath the Hyundai Kona N, and I'm using this little camera here uh, to get you some shots of the suspension in action. A lot of you are telling me they like to see that, and so what I'm hoping you're going to see in a moment is all of this stuff bouncing around and doing its job. And I want to draw your attention to this little component here, which is part of the electronically controlled suspension system. Left in its normal drive mode, I found the adaptive dampers to do a decent job of managing ride comfort on badly crumbling back roads, provided the drivers are very reasonable with their speed. You're seeing the Kona N's best work on smooth, flat, dry pavement, but back roads driving was handled with much less spinal abuse than I expected. Let's take a look at the cargo area here. Here's your standard uh, tripod bag, camera bag. And not too much room for anything else here. I'll take these out so you can see what we're looking at. Cargo cover is going to come off if we need it to. Down underneath, a little bit of an organizer. And instead of a spare tire, we have a tire mobility kit. In here, tow hook, compressor, and a can of tire sealant. 
it is very important that you know uh, what sort of spare tire or mobility provisions your new vehicle comes with because that has a major effect on what happens if you get a flat tire. Front seat occupants have easy access to charging and storage nearby, and the Android Auto system worked all but flawlessly during my test week too. On graphics, displays, and especially the steering wheel, this interior impresses. Elsewhere, not so much. There's no sunroof, climate control is a fully manual two-dial affair, and material selection is mostly grey plastic that's sure to leave some shoppers after a little more upscale flair. Occasional axle hop, suspension wax, boring plastics, and wedgies aside, the Kona N gives you a lot of cool stuff to try and makes sure you're having a good time doing it. I'd happily pay 40000 for one of these, though the future release of an all-wheel drive equipped version is now included in my nightly prayers. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard, and until next time, take care and drive safe.